antifungal drugs used to treat systemic mycosis, amphotericin B being one of them. Amphotericin B is a polyene fungicidal antibiotic and the way the mechanism of action is it binds to a gustrol in the fungal membrane forming a pore leading to loss of potassium and other small molecules leading to cell death. Amphotericin B has a broad antifungal spectrum. The main one to remember is Candida albicans. It usually develops resistance and it does this by reduced binding to a gustrol. Amphotericin B has a plasma half-life of 15 days and the pharmacokinetics include IV infusion only due to low oral bioavailability, does not cross the blood-brain barrier, undergoes renal excretion and also undergoes very slow hepatic metabolism. The clinic use of amphotericin B is usually mainly systemic mycosis and it's usually used in initial therapy in life-threatening conditions and in patients suffering from AIDS and in cancer patients. So, diseases caused by aspergillosis, candida albicans, histoplasma, blastomyces, and cryptococcus. So think when any you see any of this, and it's a very urgent and very life-threatening condition, think to use amphotericin B. Now, the adverse reactions caused by amphotericin B usually outweighs the benefits from it. So therefore, it has way more react adverse reactions than the benefits to it. The adverse reaction upon IV infusion, so i.e. immediate Immediate effects of amphotericin B include fever, vomiting, headache, hypotension, muscle spasm, and local phlebitis. But these are all things you can get from other drugs as well, i.e. these are all tolerable conditions. But the chronic cumulative organ toxicity is the ones that students should all remember. And 80% of the time, it can lead to nephrotoxicity because, as you are aware, the drug is excreted renally, so it can accumulate in the nephrons of the kidney causing nephrotoxicity and it can cause various different types of nephrotoxic conditions which we're not going to go which we're not going to go into it can also lead to hyperkalemia hypermagnesia hematological conditions like thrombocytopenia anemia myocardiotoxicity neurotoxicity and one other main one is liver hepatotoxicity leading to impaired liver function. So a patient that comes to you with impaired liver function, do not give them amphotericin B because it can make their condition worse. A patient that comes to you with impaired renal function, think again before giving amphotericin B because it can make the conditions worse. Overall, amphotericin B should not be given to a regular patient unless or until it is a very life-threatening systemic mycosis. Meet Casper the ghost. So that brings us to Casper fungin, which is an the second antifungal drug used to treat systemic mycosis. So Casper fungin, the mechanism of action is it decreases synthesis of cell wall. So in this picture here you can see the cell wall of a fungal membrane. So you can see that there is a beta gluten. So what Casper fungin does is it blocks and decreases synthesis of the cell wall by inhibiting the beta glucan part i.e. this yellow part seen here. So that's the mechanism of action. So remember amphotericin B works by binding to augustral whereas Casper fungin over here works by binding to the beta glucan part of the cell wall. So i.e. It decreases the cell wall synthesis which then leads to the bacteria falling apart because it doesn't have a cell wall. Now the plasma half-life of Casper fungin is 9 to 11 hours so it's not very long but yet it is quite long with a PK of IV infusion again. So just like amphotericin B, Casper fungin is also administered intravenously due to low oral, um, low oral bioavailability. It's very highly bound to plasma proteins. It does not cross, cross the blood-brain barrier. It's excreted in the renal and fecal. So it's excreted both renally and fe fecally and it undergoes uh, slow metabolism by hepatocytes. The Casper fungin has a very narrow spectrum, only covering two main echinocandins, echinocandins, i.e. aspergillosis and candida albicans. Its clinically used is second-line drug used in um, aspergillosis or candidiasis, and it's sometimes given to patients who are allergic or insensitive to amphotericin B and itraconazole, which is a type of ezol, which we'll, you will see later on this video. The adverse reactions of can, uh, Casper fungin include fever, rash, nausea, phlebitis. The main one to remember is our guy here with 
the liver hepatotoxicity. So casperfungin causes liver hepatotoxicity. So overall, the main mechanism of action, it binds to decreases cell wall synthesis by beta gluten in, uh, inhibition, 9 to 11 hours plasma half-life. It undergoes slow metabolic by, uh, metabolism by hepatocytes, does not cross the blood-brain barrier, it's excreted both renally and fecally, and it's a very narrow spectrum. Echinocandin, only. Flocytosine, enter, the third antifungal drug used to treat systemic mycosis. I'm sure you must, you must be bored of systemic mycosis by now. The previous two drugs were amphotericin B and casperfungin. But flucytosine works in a different mechanism of action, so let's just check it out. Flucytosine enters the fungal cell via cytosine-specific enzyme, and then it's converted into 5-fluorouracil. And then this goes on to block thymidate synthase. Thymidate synthase function was to, syn to synthesize pyrimidine and thymidine, which are nucleosides important in DNA synthesis. So by the blocking of thymidate synthesis, you basically cannot form DNA synthesis. So that's the simple way of how flucytosine works. It has a plasma half-life of 3 to 6 hours and it has a very high oral bioavailability so it's given orally. It's bound to plasma protein and does cross the blood-brain barrier so it can penetrate the CNS usually 60 to 80 percent. It's excreted renally via glomerular filtration and undergoes hepatic metabolism. The adverse reactions include alopecia as you can see here so hair loss around the body and skin and also in the lower extremities can happen, bone marrow de uh, de depression leading to bone cancer, osteoporosis and can also cause anemia because that's where protein is made, allergic reactions, GI disturbances and liver hepatotoxicity. Now flucytosine has a narrow spectrum only covering two, um, two species, Cryptococcus and Candida albicans and is usually treated usually used in CNS cryptococcus it can be used in combination with amphotericin B or another azor which will be shown later in the video so the main thing to remember is bone marrow depression and alopecia and liver hepatotoxicity it can cross the CNS and but it's given orally and the mechanism of action is very important Welcome to the land of Ezos, the fourth antifungal drugs that we're going to be talking about for systemic mycosis. Now, the mechanism of Ezos include, as you can see here on the image, like all other antifungal drugs, Ezos also inhibit the plasma membrane, but this time they work by inhibiting lanestrol. If you recall from amphotericin B lecture, you should know that amphotericin B by works, uh, works by inhibiting ergosterol. Lanestrol is a precursor of ergosterol, so azoles inhibit an enzyme called 14-alpha demethylase or lanestrol demethylase. So therefore, stopping lanestrol from being converted into ergosterol, so therefore again, there will be four pores formed in the membrane. So the main thing you need to remember is lanestrol inhibition. Now, the, the four main drugs are ketoconazole, itraconazole, fluconazole and voriconazole. Fluconazole is mainly used in the um, fluconazole has wide distribution in the vaginal fluid, itraconazole in the nails, voriconazole in the lungs, and the uh, serosa of the pleural serosa. Ketoconazole is more of the king of the SOs where it can you know it's widely distributed everywhere. So SOs has a broad antifungal spectrum. It can usually Mainly, it covers the Candida albicans species, also blastomyces, histoplasma, aspergillosis, and dermatophytes. The clinical use is vulvovaginitis, so vaginal infections usually treated by ketoconazole, systemic mycosis because by fluconazole, and um, the reason I'll tell you, onychomycosis, i.e. nail infection by itraconazole, and aspergillosis by voriconazole. The, re the main pharmacokinetics is the, uh, they're usually taken by oral administration. They have a wide distribution in the vagina, skin, and CNS. So the vagina is mainly controlled by fluconazole being the greatest and potent um, in that area, the skin being itraconazole, and CNS penetration being fluconazole, that hence why the systemic mycosis is treated by fluconazole. But all the other azoles can be used. They're they undergo first-pass metabolism, 
and they also inhibit the CYP3A4 potentiating drug effects such as warfarin and statins. They also have drug interactions with H2 blockers and proton pump inhibitors and when taken alongside these they decrease the absorption of azoles. They are excreted renally. Now moving on to adverse reactions. They can cause a vari uh, variety of adverse reactions first being GI disturbances. The most important to remember is liver hepatotoxicity and steroid decreased steroid genesis and this ketoconazole being the most potent in liver dysfunction and decreased steroid genesis. Hyperkalemia caused by itraconazole and double vision is caused by voriconazole. Alopecia is also another one to keep in your mind. So, in summary, azoles are the best drug out there with, uh, you know, to treat many of the systemic mycosis and the, the most common used azole is ketoconazole and it's used for candida albicans and vulva vaginitis. Fluconazole has wide distribution in the vagina and in the CNS, itraconazole in the nails and vori in the pleural space and of the lungs. They are, inhibit they are potent inhibitors of CYP3A4 leading to potentiating drug effects of warfarin and statins. They also have drug interaction with H2 blockers and PPI inhibitors. So we're going to be talking about allylamines which is another class of drugs used to treat superficial mycosis. Alongside that we will be talking about other drugs that we missed out throughout this lecture. So the two main allylamines that you should be aware of is turbinafine and naftifafine. Now let's go jump directly into the mechanism of action. So you remember that amphotericin B works by binding to augustrol and then forming membrane pores and you also remember that azoles work by inhibiting this molecule here known as lanestrol by inhibiting lanestrol demethylase. Now turbinafine and naftifine allylamines also work in a similar way but this time let's follow the diagram here so you have squalene which is a molecule squalene gets converted into squalene epoxide which then gets converted into lanestrol and then eventually into augustrol which is the purple molecule here turbinafine inhibits squalene epoxidase the enzyme so therefore squalene epoxide cannot be formed so therefore lanestrol and then augustrol so basically all in all it does stop formation of augustrol but for examination purposes you need to know that squalene uh, allylamines work by inhibiting squalene epoxidase. Two main drugs that you should be aware of in ter um, are turbinafine and naftifine with a plasma half-life each of 17 hours so it does have a very long plasma half-life and it's usually administered orally or by cream or by um, spray. Now it has a wide distribution mainly in the skin and nails, it undergoes liver metabolism and it's a potent CY2D6 inhibitor. So remember it's not CYP3A4 but this time CYP2D6. The reason why this is important is because it has drug interactions with drugs like tamoxifen and other painkillers. So therefore when you give terminophine or naftifine alongside naf uh, tamoxifen or other NSAIDs or other painkillers just know that this is an inhibitor so therefore the painkillers would be aggravated. Now there's increased toxicity with usage of tetracyclines and serotonin selective reuptake so it can cause selectorin uh, SSRI syndrome. Keep that in your mind as well. The adverse reactions include GI disturbances, liver hepatotoxicity and basic allergic reactions such as all over the skin and ringworms around the back. It has a very narrow spectrum covering only dermatophytes and it's only treated, used, mainly used for onchomycosis, which is nail infection. So when you see turbinafine and naftifine popping up in your exam, think nail infection, think onychomycosis. And so it does undergo liver metabolism and it's a potent CY2D6 inhibitor. Now, other drugs that you should be aware of, which I have not covered in this lecture, is azoles and uh, azoles including meconazole, clotriconazole and econazole. These are mainly used to treat athletes foot ringworm, thrush, skin fold rashes, snappy rash and ringworm around the whole body in general. Repeat it again. But these drugs are also used for superficial mycosis. The other azoles such as flu, fluconazole, ketoconazole, itraconazole and voriconazole was used to treat super um, systemic mycosis. This one here these ones, myconosol, clotri uh, clotriconosol, econosol, and ketoconosol, are used to treat 
uh, superficial mycosis such as athlete's foot, ringworm, skin fold rashes. So when you have a patient coming through the door of uh, your clinic and saying that he has a ringworm type of appearance around his skin or it's superficially located in the arms or any region, think to use superficial azoles. Now uh, cyclopyroxolamine and salicyclic acid is also other forms 